Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. We're coming to you from Petersburg, Virginia. It's actually now a cemetery, but you can see here it says, Here was fought the Battle of Petersburg. 1781, April 25th, the Southside Militia, 1,000 strong and commanded by Baron Steuben and General Muhlenberg made a brave resistance to 2,500 British regulars under Phillips and Arnold. They have a commemorative stone here. Here was fought the opening engagement of the decisive campaign of the revolution. 1,000 American militia under Steuben, Muhlenberg, Dick, and House opposed 2,500 British under Phillips, Arnold, and Abercrombie. This is also now what we came to do today is to check out the Blanford Church and Cemetery, known as the old Blanford Church, where there's a general buried here, but we're not here to see him. We're here to see a Hollywood celebrity who made his name in Citizen Kane and the Mercury Theater with Orson Welles. We're here to visit the grave of the great Joseph Cotton. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. We're gonna get some help because there are a lot of graves behind these walls. We did not plan on the rain today. And Joseph is actually buried way, way, way in the back of this historic cemetery. All the way in the back from where we entered. Of course, Joseph was raised out here in Petersburg, Virginia. He said if we drove under the arch, we were going the right way. I also said to look for the bandstand, which is right there. All right, according to where they directed me at the front office, because this was such a big place, I was like, there's no way. When I saw that it was a church cemetery, when I was coming out here, my first thought was, oh, awesome, you, those are usually pretty small. But uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Actually, I think I see they kind of pinned him right as being right in the center. So I think this is him right over here. I hope the, hen, the entire family is actually here. Oh yes, there's his wife, Patricia Medina. Here he is. Someone's actually left a poem for him. It says, a letter and a prayer for my friend Joseph Cotton. I much wish I had personally known you as a fellow Virginian and friend. I wish that I could have followed you, your films, later on known you in life in retrospect i came to know and appreciate your film image and character which were often the same you honored your family and heritage in your stardom you often spoke of this home and you chose to rest here as a handsome and notable male figure and talented class a actor in the midst of a scandals hollywood you maintained and exhibited virtue as you honored your marriage vows and in senior year, as your stardom faded, you continued as an actor in support of the work you provided. Passed away in 1994. He is here with his family. Sadly, at the end of his life, he, um, 
I had seen an interview with him, uh, doing an interview with my pal Shelly Winter's friend Skippy Low, who was kind of like an underground cult celebrity in his own weird way. And he was interviewing Joseph Cotton. And at the time, Joseph Cotton had had a stroke, but um, he was speaking with laryngitis. And I had thought that was because of the stroke, but he uh, actually, Patricia is in the interview as well. She points out, no, 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 he just has laryngitis. He should be fine in a couple of weeks. Uh, but apparently that lasted for like the last decade of his life from what I read. So Joseph was born here in Petersburg and raised here. And one of three sons, he uh, showed an app for storytelling and his parents were always entertained by him so when he was 18 they arranged for him to go get private lessons at the Hickman School of Expression in Washington DC also would earn money on the weekends <laughs> he'd earn $25 a weekend playing football during that time he eventually ended up moving to Miami and was at first a lifeguard and then he ended up getting um, a little bit of work as an advertising salesman and then he started performing for the Miami Civic Theater during that time for about five years and then found his way up to Broadway. He wasn't originally an actor there, he was a, a stage manager for Belasco which was, he was very prestigious at the time but he eventually found his way into some work starting as an understudy and then taking over the role then getting on Broadway and then touring and and then eventually during the Great Depression he was having a hard time finding work and ended up befriending Orson Welles. Joseph always had a great voice and so Orson Welles um, he and Orson Welles worked on the CBS radio program the American School of the Air and Welles always liked his comedic timing so he eventually told him you're lucky to be tall and thin and have curly hair. You can also move about the stage without running into the furniture. But these are fringe assets and I'm afraid you'll never make it as an actor. But as a star, I think you well might hit the jackpot. <laughs> so he became one of the early members of Orson Welles Mercury Theater in 1937. They did productions of Caesar. But it was that year that he made his film debut when Orson Welles directed him in a short called Too Much Johnson. And it was a comedy, but um, it was his first act on film. It was actually lost in the public for many, many years until they finally found it in 2008. But he was also really famous for the War of the Worlds broadcast that Orson Welles put on. That was kind of that thing where they made everyone believe they were doing a War of the Worlds program, making people believe that the world was being attacked. and. People actually took it seriously on Halloween and were calling and freaking out and everything and he was all part of that so that helped Orson Welles eventually end up landing his way into making legitimate movies including probably the most famous of all Citizen Kane in 1940 and of course Orson Welles ended up casting Joseph Cotton to play his best friend in the movie Jedediah Leland Citizen Kane went down as one of the greatest movies of all time and was even nominated for nine Academy Awards and for all the awards it was nominated for Joseph Cotton was one of the few that wasn't nominated that had kind of a starring or one of the major characters in the film unfortunately. He continued to work on two more movies with Orson Welles then he was even working with Alfred Hitchcock and Shadow of a Doubt and hers to hold and then eventually worked with Rita Hayworth, Agnes Moorhead again who he worked with in Citizen Kane. He was always working with really good actors. It was a good time for him especially like the 40s. Especially in 1943 Joseph went to visit Orson in his office and Orson told him that David O. Selznick wanted to make two or three films with him and that he tore up Joseph Cotton's contract with Mercury saying he can do more for you than I can, good luck. And Joseph Cotton ended up signing a long-term deal with David O. Selznick. Ended up doing 
Portrait of Jenny, which he did win an award for. For the next 20 years, Joseph Cotton ended up working on the stage, on screen. He did a little bit of everything throughout his career. He always loved working on the stage, especially from the early days, so he continued to do it as long as he could until his health ended up causing him to forcibly retire. Of course, I like many. My favorites were him and uh, the Magnificent Ambersons and Niagara with Marilyn Monroe and of course Citizen Kane. But it was interesting to note, I love the Philadelphia story with Katherine Hepburn. Apparently on Broadway, that was, Joseph Cotton was starring in that in the Cary Grant role, but when they made the movie, they didn't uh, they didn't let him have that opportunity. Joseph did end up working in film until 1981, so he did have a very long career. And he had his first wife, Lenore. He married while he was still a stage manager, and but unfortunately, in 1960, she died of leukemia, and he ended up meeting Patricia Medina, who was very close to his side to, for the rest of his life actually she was anytime you saw him there you pretty much saw her from what I could find online I mean any interview I would watch she was there you know moral support he, she was an actress as well so that's how he met her and he actually married her in the home of David O. Selznick and Jennifer Jones like I said he quit acting because of his health in 1981 he had had a stroke and it ended up affecting his speech and he worked on it for years and years but it, it just never ever came back to the way that it was then in 1990 his larynx was removed because of cancer and he ended up passing away at the age of 88 in 1994 of pneumonia well my friends thank you all for watching rest in peace joseph cotton thank you for all the great theater radio stage work that you did all the film all the television and uh telling your own story in your own book thank you all for watching we'll see you next time have a great night from petersburg virginia goodbye mm -hmm.